Are front-end developers screwed? That is the question I'm going to answer. This is just one guy's opinion. And my answer to that question, very simply put, is if you don't pivot, yes, you're screwed. So before I answer why I believe that is and also what the front-end developers should do and how they should pivot, let's take a step back and kind of look at the history of front-end development. <laughs> this smoke right now, I don't know why I blew the smoke machine. I don't know, maybe to make an inference about front-end development going into smoke. But anyways, these tools, they were in their infancy. And what we used back then was like things like front page 97, front page 98. Um, a lot of people though, they preferred to hand type their code in HTML with notepad, literally. I had a friend who did that. Um, and then things kind of transitioned from there into Dreamweaver. So Dreamweaver was a tool that was real popular back in the early 2000s. And it made it very easy, kind of like in a sort of low code environment, because you didn't necessarily have to touch code. Uh, to realize your front end. But back then, front end development was a lot more simpler because we didn't have mobile phones. We didn't have responsive design. We didn't have all the capabilities of CSS. Then what became real popular was with the Photoshop designers. I did this myself. We designed our UIs in Photoshop probably all the way up until about uh, 2010s or so. Then we used something like Fireworks to automatically split our designs up. We would slice them. It was called slicing um, into table formats, HTML table formats, and then you literally just click export. And guess what? We didn't need at all to write HTML or CSS because it kind of just worked out of the gate. It was very minimal. Then with the advent of smartphones and all that technology that came out, it was very clear that we needed a more robust solution, which really meant we need to become hand practitioners of front end development, HTML, CSS, responsive design with media queries. And we've really been in that boat probably since about the 2010 era up until about now. And what's happened with these AI and these coding LLMs, because HTML and CSS is so prolific, there's so much documentation on the internet that these LLMs are trained for, it can very accurately handle translating a design into HTML and CSS without few hallucinations. And up until about a few months ago, you could use tools like Lovable, Bolt, VO, all these other, you know, very low code vibe coding platforms, which would produce HTML and CSS for you on the fly. Now, if you tried to upload like a JPEG, for instance, and you told one of these models to create HTML and CSS out of it, it would do a piss poor job because computer vision and AI is not smart enough at this point in time to infer just through computer vision alone exactly how it needs to structure HTML and CSS. However, within the past couple months, Figma released their MCP server, and this was an absolute game changer. It's something that I've covered quite a bit here within the past couple months. Even yesterday, I uploaded this video. Check it out for sure. This MCP server allows a designer to come in and tell the AIs to take this frame or this selection or this component or this layout and translate it into working HTML and CSS. And as long as they employ the use of auto layout, they employ the use of variables within Figma um, where it's necessary, along with the styles, it will do a very good job of translating that design and making it a responsive working reality in the browser with very minimal screw ups. So what does this mean now if you're somebody who makes your money or your living by translating designs, maybe from people who design in Figma or Sketch into the browser? Because now within just a couple minutes, the desired result is achieved and it can achieve it in just regular vanilla HTML CSS. You could tell it to use Tailwind. You could tell it to integrate it into like a React app and it just works. So what should you do if you're in this position where you make your living predominantly by translating designs from like Figma or Sketch from other designers and implementing them to the browser and making them a responsive reality? What do you do? What is the transition? I'll tell you, the transition is to get into AI coding LLMs. I'm not talking about Bolt and Lovable and those types. I'm talking about Cursor, Windsurf, Claude Code. Cursor and Claude Code at the time of the recording this video seem to be the most popular with Claude Code getting real popular. But you need to get into those tools right now. And if you're somebody who has your head in the sand and you're a denialist about AI and what's coming, you're gonna be screwed. So. What I would do if I were you, get into those co those tools and start learning how to use them because it's way more than just prompting them. 
with whatever's on the top of your mind. There are specific workflows and there are skills required to maximize the efficiency and the usage of these tools. So if you were before somebody who says, hey, I could take your design and realize it in a browser through front end development. Well, now you could begin somebody is, hey, I can do that. Not only can I do that, I can also build full apps that are functioning with backends, with beautiful design. Even if you're not a great designer and you're a front end developer, guess what? There's a lot of different ways you can use component libraries like Shad CN with the help of Tweak CN. I'll cover those, I think, in a video tomorrow. I, where you can actually build UIs that look really good and function really good. So you could become somebody who was before relegated just dealing with HTML and CSS and handing off to a developer like a backend to somebody who can now develop the full app experience. That is what you market. And you're gonna be somebody who can do so very quickly and efficiently with the help of AI. Don't put your head in the sand about AI. I know developers personally who haven't really touched AI. They don't like it and I think they're in denial. That is a big, big problem. You have to get on board right now because it is more certain than ever, because I've been paying attention to stuff since its beginning, about a few years ago, that you need to get on the train of AI. So this is not really meant to be a doomer video. This is a video that is meant to warn people. Take action, you need to pivot, because within the next year or two, there's gonna be very few people paying for the service of translating designs into front end code. You need to pivot, you need to learn and take up these skills right now so that you are not left behind. And for those who do pivot and they become people who can actually develop the full app experience, the full website experience, you're gonna increase your utility, you're gonna increase your earnings way more than what you were beforehand. Because trust me, average business owners, they still don't know how to utilize these AI tools. There are skills involved. So those are the skills that I'm gonna be focused on teaching in this channel. In case you haven't noticed, I've been uploading a lot lately, the past three weeks, about four or five videos per week. Designcourse.com, I'm going to be integrating all of these really cool project-based courses. Definitely check that out. And again, don't, don't freak out, don't get too much anxiety. Pick up these tools, start learning them today.